So I'm working. Okay, today I am working in Inkscape. I'm going to show you how to add a name to the banner section of one of our snowflake designs. Inkscape is open. I'm going to import so that it doesn't open another Inkscape window. Looking for the banner. I can't really ever see it. This one right here. So the ornament with a name. If you click the control key while you're pulling on this, it will enlarge it for you in proportion instead of distorting it. So this is the banner. This is the ornament with the banner. I'm going to type a name. Uh, we are going to use Anderson and it's the Andersons. So there's an S on the end of it. Select that. And it's already there. I don't want to obviously use just this kind of boring font. I'm going to go in here and use RH Tallhand, which is my own personal font that I made and that you can get for your own self. Um, starts with an R, so I gotta back up just a little bit. RH tall hand, that one right there, and then click the apply button and it will change the font for you. So I'm going to make this a different color so that we can see it when it's sitting on top of the banner. It's red, it needs to be a little bigger obviously. Again, pushing the control button to pull it out proportionally. And I'm going to make it a little bit taller. There we go. And then when you click it again on click once gives you the arrows, click again gives you the option to rotate. So I'm going to pull this like this. Now what I want to do is make it so that it fits the curve of this little banner right here. I still need it to be just a little bit smaller than that. So I'm going to choose the little pen node tool here, the draw bezier curve. I'm going to start here, click it right there, pull it down here and pull and drag so that it gives you a nice smooth line. Pull and drag, pull and drag and then end on the banner right here and then click the enter button so that it will cut that off. Now I have that selected. I'm holding my shift key and I'm selecting the name. I'm going to go up here in text and sell it to put it on the path which it did. It doesn't look great, but it's it's what we want. So I'm going to pull that and put it in place. And then I am going to tell it to on path object to path up here under the path button, object to path. So now I can actually click on the path here and delete that, get that out of there. And these are oh good, it left my S up there in in outer Mong Slavovia, I'm not sure. Take this and ungroup it. I'm not really familiar with this program. I usually use Illustrator. And so some of this I'm doing a little looking around. I apologize for not being a little bit more up with what I'm trying to show you. But here, so you choose these and move them around to where they fit, just like that. A little bit more, select each one of these. I'm holding the shift key as I'm selecting these so that they I have all of them. And then the control key will help me pull them down without losing the shape. And this A to me looks just a little bit too curvy, so let me pull it, there we go. Now I'm pulling that out and it, and that looks good to me. So now I'm going to select everything, come up here in path and choose exclusion. And that will cut, that, knock that right on out of there. And, and that's actually what you need in order to review it. You put it into the look under the display mode. You're going to see that there's an outline. You can look and see if you have anything overlapping where you don't want it to so that it cuts something that shouldn't be cut. And it looks good. So let's go back to uh, normal mode. And I'm going to either save it 
I'm not going to save it at this point because I don't. I already have this file saved. Save it, name it, give it a name right here. Um, save it as a regular SVG, plain SVG, and and then that you'll be able to save as a and use in your Cricut file, or you can use it um, in your Silhouette Design software. Or if you have just the basic Silhouette Design software, save it as a DXF, and that will open in that. Um, anything else that you have, any other programs that either use an EPS, or uh, I don't believe you can save it as an Illustrator file. Oh, there's an EPS though. Save it as the file format that you need, and then just import it into your cutting software. If you're just going to be cutting this by hand, then you can, we're all learning this together, we're going to see if we can save this as a PDF. Because if we can, life is pretty darn snazzy. If not, oh, you can, look at that. Save it as a PDF, but before you do, reverse it so that when you print it, you're cutting your stuff from the back side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I just did that because I automatically do that when I'm using a different program. But anyway, cut them up here on the button. This button right here will give you the reverse. Flip it. And then save it as a PDF and you'll be able to just print it. You can actually print it right from here if you want to. Uh, la, yep, right there. And you choose your printer and you're good to go. Thanks for watching, and I'm hoping you're having a swell time with these files. Bye-bye.